this way eternal hostility against every form of tyranny over the mind of man. Yes, Emmanuel. Well done. Alexander Addington is a what? Get out of the country right away. Meet me in New York. Recently, he set OPEC on its ear by announcing his decision to everything okay? Offshore drilling in environmental I'll tell you later. Well, this might be good news to some. There, the limp. When he turns, that wound obviously still pains him. I got it, I got it, I told you. The better. And this is one habit you'll have to lose. I'll lose it when I have to. Which is now. The conference is only three weeks away. I'm ready. I'll be the judge of that. Um, will there be anything else, Doctor? There might be some residual pain. Treat it immediately. Otherwise, it could lead to trauma, an involuntary twitching of the facial muscles. Thank you, Doctor. You've done a fine job. There is, however, one thing more, Doctor. Oh, sit down, sit down, all of you. Several weeks ago, George Stenopoulos, one of the most respected members of the Greek parliament, was assassinated at Patras. Yes, sir, I read about it. I understand there were no witnesses. That's what the newspapers said. But there was. Suzanne, get me the file on Gregory, would you? George Stenopoulos was a key member of the Alliance of International Chemical Producers. He and I had been working together to support a ban on chemicals which could result in biological warfare. Now, another Greek friend, Stavros Kanzakis, knew of this involvement and was able to get me some information. Here is what we have on him. The authorities believe this witness stowed away on a Greek freighter bound for New York. Uh, unfortunately, he was able to elude the police. Now, we've got to find him and escort him back to Greece where well, he can be questioned. My friend Kanzakis promised to secure his safety. Susie, can I see that file? Thank you. Uh huh. So, this is our witness. Are there any leads? Not really. Oh, hell. It's going to be like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Well, I'm going to that conference. I shall be traveling with you to New York. Sir, you said it yourself. George Tenopoulos was a vital member of the Alliance. He's been murdered. I really don't think it's wise that you go. That's nice of you. I'm afraid I have no choice. George and I have been working on this project for two years. The least I can do is show my face. Do you think his murder has something to do with the announcement? Now, that is quite possible. But I can tell you this. If I can persuade our members to support this ban, it'll come as one hell of a shock to more than a few of those little tin despots out there. Gregory, 
12 years of age, no school, no home address, no family, not even a last name. A gypsy, living by his wits, picking pockets and other petty crimes, so absolutely nothing violent. Is he Greek? No, no, he's American. Of course, there's nothing unusual about gypsies moving from country to country, particularly if their talent is picking pockets. After all, there's no language requirement in that line of work. There's also one other advantage. They very rarely have a local police record. Okay, so how did this kid wind up being witness to a political assassination? Well, apparently the murder took place in George Sinopoulos' own home, and our little friend Gregory was there to rip the place off. Friend of yours, Nicky? If I'd known him, he never would have been spotted. <laughs> okay, so what does this little gypsy do for coin? Well, if he's got anything left to sell, he sells it. And if he doesn't, he steals. Well, something may well show up on a police blotter. I'll check it out as soon as we get in. I suggest you two handle the pawn shops. Well, gee, thanks, Pete. There's only got to be about a thousand pawn shops in New York City. Well, gypsies always protect their own, so why don't you just concentrate on the areas where they habitually hang out? Guess he's talking about the Lower East Side. My kind of town. Key words to remember are sustainability, conservation, and decentralization. As we enter the 21st century, now listen to this part. Listen to the inflection. Purely profit driven. Hear that? Are you listening? Are you listening? If you would pay as much attention to that speech as you do to the bottle, you would have been ready a long time ago. Now listen. As we enter the 21st century, the obligation of corporations must not be purely profit driven. That's better. Alexander Addington is in for a surprise. Somebody who hasn't done it in a while. Uh, you better watch out, JJ. You'll be out of a job. Yeah, you better watch it, JJ. <laughs> uh, I checked everyone, sir. All seems fine. Thank you very much. Reception will intercept all your calls, and the whole floor is being cordoned off just for the delegates. And anyway, no one can get access without going through security control. Good. Thank you. So I'm still a little surprised that you left Bennett in Paris. Oh, oh. Ah, how green was my valet. <laughs> Amanda! Alex! Come in! Alex! Oh, oh, my God, you look wonderful. Oh, Alex and you, handsome as always. Oh. I'm Amanda DeSanto. Peter Sinclair. Yeah, she used to be my right hand before she thought she could do better elsewhere. Well, I've got a couple of appointments, sir, so uh, since you're obviously in such good hands, I'll uh, disappear. Uh, come on. That's how a drink and talk about old times. Yes, yes. Hi, guys. How'd you get on? No one fitting Gregor's description has tried to pull anything around right here. Well, the natives ain't exactly friendly. Coffee, sir? No, you want coffee? Yeah, thanks. Did you get anything? Well, apparently, Alexander Source is right. The boy who jumped ship fits our description. It comes from a friend of mine, the NYPD, a Lieutenant Grosso, used to work the gypsy detail. Has anybody seen the kid since he hightailed it off the boat? No. But it seems as though there are some new boys working this market area. Gregory could be among them. Now, that's obviously the place to start. Most of the marks have been tourists on excursions. Well, my dear, how about a little sightseeing, just the two of us, in the morning? <laughs> what, three's a crowd? All right, step lively, this is 
the last spot before lunch. Mrs. Henderson, you'll find a washroom right over there. Now, this marketplace dates back to revolutionary times. It was rumored that George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and Alexander Hamilton all patronized a pub called the Prune and Prism, which used to stand right over there on that corner. Peter, this is the sixth tour. My feet are about to fall off. Don't worry, there are only six more. Look. Against the wall. Right now. down, but I, I just went right out of control. There, on the skateboard. Look, over there. Give me your bike, kid. I'll bring it back, I promise. Take it. Just don't bring me in, man. Okay. Maybe you and I can do some business. What? Yeah. You ever seen this kid? Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm looking for him. Is he a friend of yours? Not anymore. That's a very good answer. Everyone at the conference is so delighted you were able to attend, Alex, as am I. Uh, I hope you'll be as pleased with what I have to say. I'm sure I will be. Did you do as I told you? Yeah, yeah. You told them you were detained and you'd be back for the evening session? Yeah, I told them, I told them. Then what? I went back to the hotel. And no one at the hotel was suspicious? You couldn't? By the way, uh, the chief of your North American operations paid me a visit in my suite. I was very pleased to see you. I thought you'd like to know that. What can you possibly hope to accomplish? Alexander Addington is going to make a groundbreaking proposal to the world's chemical producers. Only it isn't the one you intended to make. No one will believe that. My dear Addington, they already have. As you've told me so many times, Alex, when billions of dollars are at stake, businessmen and politicians change their views with remarkable frequency. You had a brilliant future. You had everyone's respect and trust. What the hell is driving you to do this? You sit there in your ivory tower, so convinced you have all the answers. Well, my dear Alex, this world is the real one. I deal with it as it is, not as you think it should be. The world will be far less shocked by our speech than by yours. Do you really think a ban on chemicals will stop anyone? In the end, they'll find a way around it. I'm only allowing the inevitable to happen in a more efficient 
and cost-effective manner. You mean to tell me that this imposter is going to sell the necessary chemicals to all and sundry? You can't be so naive as to believe that no one will question why I'd do such a thing. Oh, Alex, I'm sure they'll question it. But by the time they do, you'll be dead. Are you in charge here? That depends on what you're looking for. I'm looking for someone. Well, you found them. Are you the owner? <laughs> yeah, I am. When I'll be dead and buried 20 years, maybe then he will be the owner. My son. What can I do for you, my dear? I am hoping you can help me find someone. Why are you looking here? He's a gypsy, very young, only 12. And I think you're protecting him. Come with me. for this child. He's in trouble. Many people are looking for him. I want to help him, protect him from the harm. I can tell more from your palm than I can from your voice. You have a quick mind, and you can be ruthless. You have a kind heart. You would not bring harm to this boy. My only concern is his safety. I see money. Vast sums of money. But it is not yours. Some of it can be yours. I'm listening. Alexander, you old dog. You're looking positively fit. Oh, thank you. Graham. Alexander, I made all the arrangements you requested. Thank you. I was uh, thinking that... Uh, what I have to say would, would uh, probably have more impact uh, coming at the closing ceremony rather than now. Um, you reschedule that? Yes, yes, of course. A friend. You won't tell me the trouble you're in, but I believe it is big. Tell her. I can help you. I don't need any help. I know all about you. And Stanopolis, the man you so murdered. If I can find you, the people who want you dead, sooner or later they'll find you too. I can take care of myself. Can you? I can. Even after you tell your story. Who are you? A friend. You can trust me. Yeah, right. Hey! Hey, 
Time for your father's speech from New York. Oh, thank you, Bennett. There has been a slight change in the order of our speakers. If you uh, will consult your schedule, Alexander Addington, who was to have spoken at this time, has requested that his remarks be deferred to our closing ceremonies. At this time, Joseph Shields of the Deutscher Chemical Company will speak in his stead. Yes, I'd like to leave a message for Alexander Addington. Have him call his daughter the moment he gets back to his suite. Thank you. I wonder what's happened, Bennett. Wow. What do you have to do to get a plane like this? Drink your milk and don't tell lies. What's this thing do? No, 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 don't touch those, no. Why don't you come over here and have a seat in this nice big chair? Do you have any cartoons or anything for this kid to watch? Give him one of your comic books. Very funny, Nikki. Very funny. Nick, what time is it? Time? It... Okay, wise guy. Hand it over. <laughs> come on, hand it over. Give me my watch. Give me my watch. Well, the next time you try that, you're going to be in big trouble. Father? How are you? I could ask you the same thing. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm fine, fine. That's not what I mean. The speech. Why didn't you make the announcement? Oh, I thought it would go better as a closing statement. Uh, hold on a minute, uh, Suzanne. There, uh, some members of the conference have just come in. Please be seated, gentlemen. I'll be with you in a moment. S sorry, I, I, I've got to go now. I'll talk to you later. Bye. But... Good. Keep it up. She's going to be a problem, that one. Don't forget to call her tomorrow, pacify her. We can't have her or anyone else rocking the boat before the conference. You'll be able to fool her for that long. Jesus. We can handle it. Don't forget, tragedy is no stranger to the Addington family. just that he didn't make his announcement. Bennett and I looked at the tape again. And look at this. See the way he holds his head? Susie, your father works under a great deal of stress. I think you're blowing a few exaggerated mannerisms out of all proportion. Mr. Sinclair, if I may interject something here. Notice the tie. That's a Windsor knot. Mr. Addington only ever uses the four in hand. A gentleman may change his nationality or even his wife, but he never changes the way he ties his tie. There's something very odd going on here. And Miss Suzanne and myself would truly appreciate it if you drop in at the hotel and check out Mr. Addington on your way. On our way, Bennett? I mean, we're already two and a half hours out of New York. Peter, please, you've got to go to him immediately. He's never cut me off like that. I know something is wrong with him. All right, Susie, all right. But you're going to have to call Stavros Kanzakis. Tell him we'll be delivering Gregory a little late. 
JJ. Yeah. Will you head back to New York, please? Yeah, back to New York. Thank you. So he tied his tie a little differently. He lost his temper with Suzanne. I mean, is that really enough reason to saddle us with this package for any longer than absolutely necessary? Men are creatures of habits. If they put their left shoe on before the right, that's the way they do it for life. If uh, the old dog is changing his tricks, maybe there is something wrong. Just seems like we're overreacting about this. Yeah, well, hold on, Luke, hold on. You can't afford to be too cavalier about this. Suzanne could be right. Look, it's pretty simple. As soon as we arrive in New York, you guys just keep an eye on trouble over there, and I'll go and have a word with Alexander. I don't think it's any big deal. I get to look after trouble. <sighs> Thanks, Pete. Mr. Addington Suite. Yes, one moment. It's Stavros Konzakis. The Greek politician. What does he want? Find out. Yes. Uh, yes, Stavros. No, I didn't summon them here. Yes, of course I will. As soon as possible. What is it? Some guys working for Addington got their hands on a witness. The only witness, it seems, to the Stenopolis murder. Where is this witness? I don't know. But someone calls Sinclair is on his way over. Sinclair. Call. Four house. You sure you're rich enough to keep playing? Yeah, I'm rich enough. Let me see that deck. How about a little dice? No more, Gregory. Why don't you and Luke play? Hmm? The only way I want to see that kid play is in traffic. <laughs> little creep. Hey, 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 he's just a kid. Yeah, Al Dillinger was a kid once, too. You're good. May, maybe you and me could go into a little business? Yeah. No, oh, I'm retired. Now, why don't you just do all of us a favor and sit down and be quiet? What are you looking at? <laughs> Come in, Mr. Sinclair. What the hell's going on? Ken Zakis just called me. So, may I have a word? In private? Yeah, of course. But... Sir, Suzanne is very concerned that you're working far too hard. Oh, yeah, I know, I know. She called me again a little while ago. <laughs> you know how daughters are. Alex, it's the committee chairman. Oh, you know, I'm a lucky man. Amanda agreed to come back and work for me. Yes, I'll be reassuming my duties as Mr. Addington's executive assistant. I see. Uh, oh, Peter, <laughs> we've taken another tack on the boy. Amanda will fill you in on the details. Excuse me. But, sir. And if I may ask, what exactly is this new tack that we're taking? Mr. Addington has some reliable information that the Konsakis organization has been penetrated. We don't know, as yet, exactly who the traitor is. And until we do, we feel it would be best if you did not return the boy to Greece. So you want us to keep him? No. We would like you to bring him here as soon as possible. Mr. Addington has made arrangements with completely reliable Greek expatriates living here in New York. They'll keep him sheltered until we can find out what's going on with the Konzakis operation. 
I don't think that's wise. I'll tell Mr. Addington that you have reservations about his plan. In the meantime, please see that Gregory is here at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. The arrangements have all been made. Mr. Santos, I don't recognize your authority. I make my own rules. Mr. Addington knows that. Have him phone me. He'll only tell you what I did. Fine. Until tomorrow, Mr. Sinclair. JJ, why would you want to go out with the prison guard? Man, you should see this lady. I mean, she's got some great accessories. Well, you just make sure that she doesn't accessorize you with a pair of handcuffs that you can't get out of. <laughs> no, this could handcuff me any day. Get out of town. Is that a beer? Don't turn The boss called? Uh, no. Nikki, can you get me Suzanne? Sure. What's up? The boss has taken leave of his senses. Hello, Addington residence. Can I help you? Oh, those burgers, Pete? Yeah. Oh, hello, Bennett. Is Susan there? Oh, no. No, Miss Beaumont. She's en route to New York. Left an hour ago. Hi, right, JJ. Mm -hmm. We're not going anywhere. Tell the tower. Bennett, is Mr. Addington on any kind of medication? Go to heavens, no. He never takes anything stronger than aspirin. You know that. Why do you ask? What do you know about Amanda DeSanto? Well, she was his executive assistant for eight years, just before she set up her own consulting business, apparently doing rather well. Were they having an affair? Mr. Addington does not have affairs, Mr. Sinclair. Yeah, I rather thought that would be your answer. Then you shouldn't have asked. I didn't. We'll be in touch. You getting that, Pete? Well, he's not on any kind of medication. He doesn't appear to be drinking. He doesn't seem any more stressed than usual. I mean, quite frankly, I think he is having an affair. Well, it would be rather nice if he could find somebody. Yeah, but he's put her in charge, Nikki. And she's ordered us to take Gregory to the hotel tomorrow at nine. Apparently, the Kanzakis organization has been infiltrated. Okay, so we'll just check it out and we'll phone Kanzakis. Can't do that, Luke. And if there really is a breach, then we'd put them in mortal danger. And anyway, I am not taking instructions from some pumped-up personal assistant. Peter, don't let your pride get in the way. And taking orders from a woman isn't so bad. It's not the point, Nikki. Pete, what choice do we have? Thank you, Sinclair. Mr. Sinclair. Who are you? Edward Petrocolis. He'll be able to see that Gregory comes to no harm. I want to speak with Mr. Addington. You could if he was here. Unfortunately, Alex is en route to the conference center. Then I know where to find him, don't I? Take care of yourself. Thanks for nothing. Stay out of trouble. So, how's Alexander? Well, he wasn't there. He's on his way to the conference center. You and I are going to join him. Luke, Gregory's with a man called Patroclus. Look, I have no idea what they're going to do with him, but keep an eye on him. Not to worry, my man. I planted one of my little bugs in his pocket.
Did you speak to him? No. Yep, yeah, where are you? Listen, they moved Gregory to a little uh, tenement right outside the city. We're not that far from the conference center. God, I don't like this. Look, look around. Quietly. Got it. I owe you an apology. What for? I'm afraid I'm the reason you're here. How do you figure that? Well, I thought I could guarantee your safety so that you could tell the truth. No way. I know what happens if I do. I talk and I'm dead. Not necessarily. If you agree to tell, the murderers will be brought to justice. Yeah? And one of them's out there. And it seems to me that he has you, not the other way around. Oh, I think my friends will find a way to get us out. I don't know who your friends are, but I'm not going to hang around here to find out. I'm out of here. Gregory, you're a remarkable young man. How'd you do that? if I could have your attention, please. Thank you. Now, before we continue, I would just like to mention that we hope to see all of you at the evaluation breakfast that is tomorrow, 8 a.m., in the dining room. Also, for those of you who might be interested, there is a cruise uh, of New York Harbor. Yeah. OK, I've got the chief. What? That is 4 p.m. today. What are you talking about, Luke? Of course. Alexander's right here. He's about to make his speech. Well, give me that. Peter, Please check with, uh, Mrs. the man on the podium is an imposter. You can't let him make that speech. There is also a We're on our way. Theater yes, sir. For you and your spouses. Information on this is available at the hospitality desk. How have we slice this? We've got two Alexanders on our hands. What do you mean, two Alexanders? It seems that Suzanne was right. Someone has cloned Alex. Very successful sessions and recommendations will be tabulated Evaluated. How do we know which one is the fake? If you have any comments, you would like to the wins or not. see me after this meeting. But before we go on, we would like to take a moment of silence in memory of a dear departed colleague, George Stenopoulos, a man who devoted his life to the goals and principles of this organization. And now, without further ado, I would like to introduce Mr. Alexander Addington, our key speaker. Luke. 
Meet me at the southwest corner of the conference center, the service corridor. I'm just pulling up, buddy. Great, because we've got to make a switch. Yeah, get me Grosso. I have long, I have long uh, given thought and consideration. Okay. to wait a tad longer before dousing the lights on me. <laughs> but now that they are back on and I can see your eyes quite clearly, I want to look into them and tell you straight that each and every one of us here tonight must support a ban on the manufacture and sales of toxic chemicals, the ingredients of biological warfare. Going to the powder room? You'll have to hold it for about 20 years. Who are you? I'm the lady with the gun. Oh, yes, there are still those among us who are determined to thwart us from our efforts. We must not allow them to dissuade us from our purposes. I am proud indeed to be the first to sign this proclamation, the beginnings of a toxin-free 21st century. was wonderful. I'm so proud of you. Let's hope your initiative will have a lasting effect. Thank you. I hope so. I'm glad you came. I meant what I said, which includes setting you on the right track. As you can see, the alternative is not a pleasant one. I guess you're right, Mr. Addington. I would like to visit you in Paris. Especially if I can stay with Luke, like you said. Wait a second, wait a second. It's like a bad joke or something, isn't it? You're joking, right, Chief? Huh? He's joking. Are you going to have to go through life with a fish like that? first century. Each of us must remember that we don't inherit the earth from our ancestors. We borrow it from our children. <laughs> 